For six long hours, negotiators tried to talk with Dr. Naramuchi and end last night's standoff peacefully. KXAN's Tom Miller spoke with Austin security expert R. Kent Morrison about their tactics and what the SWAT team was trying to achieve. When a SWAT team arrives at a call, what is their first priority going into that situation? Preservation of life, uh, everyone's life. And so typically what you're going to see with a SWAT response is going to be secure the, the immediate vicinity, secure the perimeter, uh, get as many people safely out of there as possible, and then as quickly as possible start working to diffuse the situation. How do negotiators who work as part of this team, how do they make a connection with the suspect? Based on what I'm hearing on this situation, it followed a pretty standard process of they're going to try and connect with the individual who's clearly at a, at a critical moment in, uh, in their lives. The negotiators were talking specifically about the suspect's dogs. They were talking about his health. Right. What, what's the benefit of mentioning things that specific? They're trying to personalize the connection with the individual that they're speaking with. The more personal they can make that connection, the more likely they are to develop that rapport that is going to hopefully lead them to a place where they can diffuse the situation peacefully. At some point, is the determination just made that this isn't working and, and we our best chance now to save anyone's life is, is to go in? Sometimes that is the, the end result is, you know, if they get to the point, however long it may take, where the, the individual, the scene commander decides negotiations have failed to the point where we don't believe we can uh, you know, recover them, then yeah, the SWAT team is going to take that step of going in dynamically